We share a lot of the same crew members. I remember when, the, when you were first about to make it, uh, some of them told me, oh yeah, it's gonna be a fast shoot, Gwen's gonna make this really kind of down and dirty, it's more like a, uh, a theater type piece. Um, when did it switch to become an epic? Was it once you kind of picked the cameras and that kind of just changed your idea of the scope of it, the scale of it? I mean, it seemed like it grew into this, you know, masterpiece that you turned it into. I think it originally wasn't going to be like something you just wanted to go and get done. Well, we, it wasn't about the idea of just knocking it out quickly. We were trying to do it on a, a maybe a, a lower budget than we we uh, we should have tried to do it on. Not because we had to. I just thought it might be, you know, a, a good lean thing to do, not just luxuriate. Um, but, you know, uh, um, as far as I was concerned, we were kind of down and dirty as far as this was concerned. What, what we ended up, it ended up taking a little bit longer uh, than we wanted to because we had to wait for snow for a while. All right, basically January was just a real bad, we had snow on the ground, but we weren't getting any falling snow. Now, by February, we were just fine. We had all, we had all the snow we needed. Uh, and you can see it, it's probably right there in the movie. But, you know, but there was a little bit of time that uh, we were probably on location about a month and a half longer than we were planning to be same time, it made the movie better, frankly, so I don't really mind about that. But it also, I mean, it just feels like a big event, too, just well, the way you know, well, well, you know, once we decided to shoot with these cameras, you know, uh, you know, that was the way it was going to, that was the way it was going to be. And, uh, but one of the things that, you know, actually just ended up, almost everything like that ended up just working out, because we were working with these Ultra Panavision lenses before. They hadn't been used since the mid-60s. The movie Khartoum was the last movie to actually use these lenses. And we knew we wanted to shoot you know, on 70, and then uh, Bob Richardson and uh, Gregor Tavernay, uh, the focus puller. And I gotta really say, I don't even know if me and Bob would have had the, uh, uh, the balls to shoot this movie without like somebody we trusted pulling focus on the film. Um, and uh, the thing is, we found, you know, we, we, he found these lenses, and he goes, where are these? And then they, uh, Panavision explained it to him. He goes, well, do they work? And goes, well, we think they do. And <laughs> they went out and did some tests, and, you know, uh, and, and for the most part, they did work. You know, now they just had to go, Panavision had to go and really make sure that they could work more. And so the Panavision, like, really got, to, uh, got going, and then they started refurbishing the cameras. They started working on the lenses. They created... Uh, 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 20 minute mag reels to hold uh, the whole film because they, they only had uh, like about like 10 minute ones. I wanted at least 20 minutes. You know, so they had to invent that basically and they had to build it. They did. Uh, and they really looked at the whole thing, like we all did actually. They looked at the whole thing as a, as a legacy piece, as a, you know, something for their legacy. And um, so, we, uh, so we jumped in, but the thing about it is we're thinking, well, we're going to be out in this cold and this weather. Uh, so th there's probably going to be some time for these lenses are going to freeze up or the cameras are going to freeze up and we're just going to have to, you know, go with it and just deal with stuff. None of that ever happened. It never, never happened. It was just, you know, uh, the crew was just so good that they, they looked at everything that could possibly happen and took all the safeguards that they would need to make sure shit didn't happen and shit didn't happen and, and it worked out just really wonderful. The only thing that was uh, tricky was the weather for the simple fact that, look, we came there to shoot weather. So we weren't going to just do a bunch of phony stuff while we were there because the weather wasn't necessarily cooperating. But the point being, though, was we never really knew what the, any weather conditions were going to be any more than three days in advance. So basically what we had to do is, depending on what the weather was going to be, uh, you know, a couple days in advance, that's what we were shooting. If it was going to be cloudy and overcast, we were in the stagecoach. If it was going to be sunny, we were in mini shooting. If the snow was falling, we were back up there doing the stuff outside of the stagecoach. Then that would stop, and then we wouldn't film the other part of the scene for another two weeks or two and a half weeks or so. So it was, I, I was never used to, I was not used to doing drop and pickup, but we just did drop and pickup the entire time we were out there.